Happy Sabbath, dear viewer. Today is a great day. It's a day, a special day uh, that I would like to welcome you and um, um, to our 100 days of prayer series. And today being a Sabbath, it is a wonderful day and a new beginning. Remember, this is the day that God created and uh, he sanctified it and he put it aside for us to commune with him. And I hope that you are enjoying your Sabbath. Even though you are at home, you are watching me from home. Even though you are watching me from um, uh, uh, wherever you are um, in the nature, um, I hope that God is with you. Today is, uh, today is day 58, day 58. And we have, oh, yesterday we started with a new topic where we are looking at um, seeking, uh, looking deep down in our hearts. And today we, we are starting a special uh, study where we are focusing on the Beatitudes, on the Beatitudes in the Ma book of Matthew chapter 5. Today's verse is from Matthew 5 verse 3. Matthew 5 verse 3. Before we start, um, shall we have a word of prayer? Our kind and loving Master in heaven, we thank you and we glorify your name for this day that you have created and for us, O Jehovah God. Thank you for your admonitions that we should rest and uh, uh, consecrate our lives to thee. And today is a day, the uh, Holy Sabbath that you created for us so that we can commemorate of your creation and of your goodness and of your mercies. And also it is a day that you created for us to refresh ourselves, to uh, put aside our works and our, our, our cares and come to thee so that we can fellowship together. We ask that may your Holy Spirit abide with us and at this moment as we study your word, may your Holy Spirit interpret it for us. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. The scripture says um, in the book of Matthew 5 verse 3 that blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This scenario where Jesus was teaching these, uh, these beatitudes was a scenario where multitudes followed him and they went to him. They wanted to listen uh, from him. And when you read from verse 1, actually we can read, the Bible says, And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, when Jesus opened his mouth, I think he looked unto the, 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 his audience and he felt that these were the most important words that he could tell them. Because remember, some of them were filled with uh, pride. Some of them were filled with uh, a lot of things which were unnecessary. Some of them were anticipating to hear of his counsel. And that's when he came to and, 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 and he opened his mouth and told them of these wonderful, beautiful words. And this week we will be looking at these words. And the first word that we, we would like to look at is um, um, poor in spirit. The title of our, of our study today is Blessed Poverty. <laughs> I know poverty is something that is hated. Even myself, I don't love poverty. I would not like to be associated with poverty. Remember in, high, in primary school or in high school when there are some of those children who had poor uh, parents and whenever they would see their parents coming for visitation, during visitation or the open day when parents were expected to come, they would not even like to be associated with them because they wanted to live a life that they are, they are not entitled to. Maybe their parents had, uh, had no shoes or they, they came with the shoes that were known as sadak, yeah, the, the shoes that were associated with the pure people. Maybe when they came, they did not bring um, uh, good food, yummy, yummy food. They just maybe boiled some maize and brought because that what they could afford. And other children were having buffets with uh, a, a lot of meat, a lot of chapatis. Remember, chapatis in our days were only cooked when we were celebrating the new year because we are Adventists. Uh, we couldn't celebrate Christmas or s such kind of things. 
So it, 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 they, they couldn't have associate. They did not want to associate themselves with their parents because their parents portrayed how poor they were with the way they, they, they looked. And um, uh, maybe you can bear witness with me. Some even ran away. They did not want to. To, to, to be seen together with their parents. Others were raised up with their, by their grandmothers, and their grandmothers would come the way they are, the way they are dirty, they would come to visit them, and they would not uh, want to be associated. There is no one who would like to be associated with poverty. But here, we are studying about blessed poverty. Shall we go through this and see what this kind of blessed poverty is spoken here? And the Bible is saying that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Those who know that they cannot possibly save themselves or of themselves do any righteous action are the ones who appreciate the help that Christ can bestow. Are we together? That those who focus in their hearts and they know that they cannot do anything to save themselves. They are poor. That their spirit or their hearts cannot help them to save, to be saved. Are the ones we are speaking about. This is the kind of poverty we are speaking about here. They are the poor in spirit whom he declares to be blessed, whom Christ pardons. He first makes penitent, and it is the office of the Holy Spirit to convince of sin. Those whose heart have been moved by the convincing Spirit of God see that there is nothing good in themselves. Let me tell you, if you see or if you perceive yourself as good, then the Holy Spirit has nothing to do in your life. If you perceive yourself that you are rich in spirit, then the Holy Spirit will not have praise in your heart. You must accept that you cannot by your own. You cannot by your own, by your own self, by your own separate, you, you must say that I cannot. Remember, that they see that all, the, the, the ones who, who, who perceive themselves that they can't, they see that all they have ever done is mingled with self and sin. Like the poor publican, they stand afar off, not daring to lift up so much as their, as their eyes to the heaven and cry, God, be merciful to me, I, I the sinner. Remember the publican? The publican was someone who was perceived by human beings as a sinner. And when he went to pray, he was not like the Pharisee. The Pharisee said of all the good things that he had done, he praised himself. He said, I'm not like this one. But the publican humbled himself. He couldn't even lift up his eyes up in heaven. He just looked down and accepted his sinfulness. And Jesus recommended him for what he did. All who have a sense of their deep soul poverty, who feel that they have nothing good in themselves, may find righteousness and strength by looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. You must find that your heart, by yourself, you can't do anything. You must uh, perceive uh, life as that it is only Jesus who can save you. And when you do that, Jesus will come and he will cleanse you, he will help you, and he will uplift you. It is a high time that we perceive ourselves as sinners. Remember, self-righteousness the all permitting and often a subconscious attitude that deceives us into thinking and fearing that we are good is the greatest hindrance in truly receiving personal salvation in Jesus. When we realize our spiritual poverty, our lifelong desperate need for Jesus, and as a result trust solely in him moment by moment, to fully, to fully and completely heal us from every last trace of selfishness, only then can we have the assurance of salvation. Today, 
the question that I want you to ask yourself is why not come to Jesus as you are? Ask your heart this question. Why, why, why my heart? Why can't I give myself to Jesus Christ today? Let your heart, which is broken because of sin, which is broken because you have realized that you have been living with selfishness, come to Jesus today. Why not claim only his blood, his life and death as a means for salvation? Why not ask him to uproot all self-reliance that is still in your heart and replace it with a faith in his ability to save you and to empower you to do good works motivated by selfless love? Remember, he, he came and he offered himself. He, he, he came and sacrificed himself. Jesus as God, he said that I cannot see man being uh, uh, destroyed anymore by sin. Let me go and save this man. Today Jesus is calling you. Today Jesus is calling me that we should give ourselves to him. We should accept him. We should allow him to, 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 to clean our heart. The, the prayer that I would like to focus uh, today is to pray for Jesus to clean my heart. I hope this is the prayer that you would like Jesus, uh, you would submit to Jesus. May Jesus cleanse you from all self-righteousness because this is a hindrance for salvation. And may he give you a realization of your great daily and lifelong need of him because this is what we need. This is all what we need in our lives. Jesus. We just need Jesus. We need Jesus to fix our world. We need Jesus to come in our world. Let me end with this story. A, a pastor was preparing a sermon, and I, I can, I can, I, I, I can um, link up myself with this pastor because sometimes we sit down, we want to have a very wonderful uh, a, a, a title. We want to have an eye-catching uh, subject so that our viewer will listen unto us. And this pastor was like me. One day he was sitting down, and the daughter was disturbing him so much. The daughter wanted to get attention of his daddy. But what happened? The daddy was not concerned about this daughter. He wanted the daughter to stay away from him so that he can concentrate to get a title for, or a title for his sermon. And he came up creatively with something. He saw a map of the world and said, I will tear up this map give to my daughter and promise my daughter that when she finishes uh, um, fixing this map, bringing, joining the, the pieces of the paper together to, uh, to make the map of the world again, I will take care of, I, I will answer all her, 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 her questions and I will be, I will concentrate to her. Not knowing something that I will tell you. The daughter started working on that map and within five minutes the daughter had, was through with making that map or fixing the map of the world. And he said, Daddy, here we go. The map of the world is here. Wow! The father was amazed, was surprised. How comes this little daughter who does not know anything about geography, has nothing, uh, any idea, has no idea about the geography, has been able to fix the map of the world? And he was curious to know how this daughter did it. And do you know what? The daughter told the daddy. Daddy? Uh, the, the father asked the, the, the daughter, how have you fixed this and you don't know anything about the map of the world? And then the daughter with a big smile said, Daddy, behind this map there was a picture of Jesus. Behind the map? There was a picture of Jesus. So it was simple for me to fix Jesus. And when I fixed this image of Jesus, then the map of the world was fixed. The father got a very wonderful, eye-catching sermon. And this sermon was, when you put Jesus in his place, then you will fix the world. Brethren, the call today, is to fix Jesus in his praise. May he have praise in your heart. May you give him your heart. And when you give Jesus your heart, he will fix all your problems. He will fix you.
and they will fix even our world. Why the world is apart today, why there is a lot of problems, a lot of miseries, is because we have not put Jesus in his place. Let us accept Jesus and put him in his right place. And when we do that, we will have fixed our lives, and not only our lives, even our world. May God bless you, and may you continue tuning in to our channels. Share this message with your brothers and your friends so that they can be blessed. Shall we humble ourselves in prayer? And remember our prayer point today is to pray for God to be in our hearts so that he will enable us to humble ourselves and to accept him in our lives. Shall we pray? Our kind and loving master in heaven, we come before thy throne of grace this day. We thank you for this holy Sabbath that you have given unto us. Because Jehovah indeed, as man, as man we needed this day. To rest of our, of our troubles, of our cares of the week. To rest of our work that we have been doing and concentrate commemorating of your creation, of your goodness unto us, thanking you and communing with you. We thank you. May your name be glorified. Today, Jehovah God, we have heard from your scripture that Jehovah, there is a blessed poverty. God, may you help us to humble ourselves, to, call, to, 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 to see ourselves as unrighteous so that you will be able to make us righteous. I know that Jehovah God, we might be trying to do our best to remain holy, but we can't by ourselves. May, we help, may you help us, Father, to allow, so that we can allow the Holy Spirit to reign in our hearts, so that he can lead us into a way of righteousness. We thank you for being with us, and we thank you because you have promised that when we humble ourselves, you will come in and you will reign with us. As we continue with this study, we pray that may your Holy Spirit dwell in our hearts so that he can, he can help us to, 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 to mend our characters to be in your likeness. Thank you, Jehovah God, for being with us. And thank you for my dear viewer. May you continue blessing him or her. Continue answering his prayers. Continue providing for him or her. And Jehovah God, at the end of this all, of it all, Jehovah God, we will stand together to give witness of how the way you have been with us and we will say that indeed you have been in our lives and the victory we have won, it is not because of ourselves but because of your power. May you continue leaning in our hearts and continue preparing us for your second coming. And we ask of your Holy Spirit, the latter lane to lean on us so that we will be able even to share these messages with others so that they can also be prepared for your second coming. Thank you for answering our prayers and thank you for listening unto us for we have prayed this shortly breathing and trusting in that sweet and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. May God bless you, my dear viewer, and may the Holy Spirit abide with you. Stay safe. And may the Holy Spirit abide with you day by day. May God bless you until we meet tomorrow.